The significance of this car is that it is thought to be the last rear engine Skoda built. It's certainly got a certificate to say it's the last coupe built. This is the shapely rapid, but it's hard to think. This represents the end of the line for the old Skoda and the old Skoda jokes. The favorite that replaced it had front wheel drive, front engine, and then Volkswagen bought the company and things changed rapidly then and it just became a budget brand of Volkswagen. This is a proper Skoda and all the better for it. Inside it's all quite spacious but there's a lot of wheel arch intrusion that throws the pedals over towards the middle of the car so the very offset and there's nowhere for your clutch foot to rest. The driving position does feel a bit odd, my arms are very extended but the pedals are still quite sort of crushed up but the, I mean the gear lever it's, it's like that in a coach it's got an enormous travel on it. It's all very jolly though and even though the plastics in here are horrible this reflects very badly in the windscreen it, it feels different it certainly doesn't feel like a slightly cheaper Volkswagen. Straight away you realise this car isn't anywhere near as dreadful as you might expect. Skoda's reputation was always pretty terrible and yes there's the odd build quality issue and these aren't the finest materials in the world. But the truth is the car actually drives very well and they were hugely popular with their customers. People who actually find them were very reliable. I mean this gear change does take some getting used to, allied to the strange pedal position. And it never at any point feels like a car you really want to hustle. But, I mean it's putting a smile on my face, I'm finding this very jolly. And the truth is, you kind of forget that it's rear engine. It's very quiet because all the noise is back there. But when you come to bends, it doesn't feel unwieldy, not by any stretch of the imagination. Bizarrely, this car was actually ordered by Lord Strathcarron. That's why it's still got a city of Westminster past stuck in the rear window. And he was very adamant, he wanted the last rear engine Skoda and he got it. That's 60 miles an hour, we're doing 2,500 revs, so the gearing is very well suited to long journeys. It's only done 42,000 miles from new, and the current owner has that dilemma. How much do you use a car that arguably should be a museum piece? I'm very glad it isn't a museum piece though, or I wouldn't be driving it right now. This car was built in 1990, which was also the last year of the Citroen 2CV. And you think, did variety die that year? Goodbye rear engine Skoda, goodbye Citroen 2CV. Everything started to become a facsimile of everything else from that point on. So she goes up this hill, this is a proper big one. With just over 50 brake horsepower. Not the most powerful of engines, but we're going well enough. Come up to the hairpin, downshift to second. In we go. No drama, we're around. I could talk about what this car's like all day, and frankly, that'd get a bit boring, but it's greater than the sum of its parts because for me, it stands for the huge excitement that was building in Czechoslovakia when this car was built in 1990. It was the end of the communist era, people were taking power themselves, actual democracy was taking over and things were looking up. I mean this car is built very well, it may still have some of the iffy components that Skoda are a bit notorious for, but it, it feels like a car that has positivity about it. It was the end of the rear engined era for Skoda, just as it was the end for communism. Front wheel drive, actual advances were taking over. And for me, that's hugely significant. Sometimes cars are more than just a car. They represent something a whole lot more. And that's definitely true 
with the rear engine Skodas. I've been honoured to have a go in this one and I hope you've enjoyed it too. See you next time.